wherever you are. Now that we're recording the call, I'll say it again. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much to our panelists who are willing to set aside an hour of your time and share experiences that will be extremely valuable uh, for the incoming summer interns of 2024. Whether you're doing an internship with GAIN or something else, we wish you success. We want to help you. We want to give you the tools to be a part of that success. And so this panel is really set up to do that. We will spend the first 10 minutes with introductions because our panel panelists have exceptionally interesting backgrounds and appropriate uh, insights to share to, to help you sort of put into context what it takes to have a successful career in investment management. And then we have some questions that we prepared uh, that we think will address a lot of your own questions and concerns, but you can also put other questions in the chat as we go through uh, our sort of Q&A, and then we'll set aside time at the end of this call. So we'll set up probably 15, 20 minutes at the end of the hour uh, to take your questions live. So with that in mind, uh, I am Natasha brikinski munier I am the co-chair of the Board of Trustees of GAIN. And I was sort of an early volunteer, an early stage enthusiast uh, when GAIN first got started in 2019. As I was wrapping up my 20 years uh, on, in investment management uh, as a portfolio manager, as an analyst, as an ESG director, and this became my passion project. <laughs> so I hope to be able to share with you what I think is important in building a career in asset management, more importantly, to connect you with people. And, and as GAIN, we offer you just the experiences and mentorships and relationships and insight days and internships to make it all happen. So on to our panelists. Um, if each of you could just introduce yourselves in terms of name, the firm you're with, uh, what your responsibilities are, and more importantly, how you got there, that would be fantastic. And Devin, we'll start with you. Perfect. Thanks, Natasha, and welcome, everyone. Super excited to be here today. My name is Devin Sapatelli. I'm on the talent acquisition team here at Poland Capital. Um, I am a talent acquisition manager. I primarily, I wear a lot of different hats. Poland's a bit of a smaller firm, but primarily as it relates to interns, I'm responsible for running all of our partnerships. Um, I recruit for the intern program and then curate the program experience over the summer once interns actually get here. I am based in the U.S., but I'm actually relocating to London in the fall, so I'm eager to be able to participate in some of the GAIN events in person. I got here, um, I spent most of my career in asset management prior to this role. I was working at Fidelity for about four years, and I also was in the asset management campus recruiting space. So i um, happy to answer any questions as it relates to investment research recruiting, particularly on the buy side, but I can also hopefully be of help on the sell side too. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. Thank you. Excellent. Elena, would you like to go next? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Elena Alzinger. Um, I am a principal in the Wellcome Trust investment team. Um, and for those who don't know, the Wellcome Trust is the UK's largest charitable foundation. We manage about £38 billion and we give away about a billion pounds per year to improve human health in every in research into everything from mental health through to infectious disease. Uh, so that's funded from our multi-asset portfolio. I um, am in charge of the absolute return portion of that, which hopefully generates steady and consistent returns in any environment. I also oversee our work on climate, including our net zero portfolio target, which is quite a different um, perspective to bring to things, but equally interesting. Um, I have a few <clears throat> non-welcome hats as well, um, just to show the breadth that a career in investment management can provide. I'm a non-exec director for an Octopus Renewables Investment Trust and trustee for the University of Cambridge. So it's, it's nice to be able to, to give back in that way as well. Um, how did I get here? Um, I did history at university and then I interned at Goldman Sachs in their M&A team in 2006, which was the boom days before the, the GFC. And that translated into a full-time offer. Um, so I started in 2007. 
did three years, three years there, then moved into the investment management side in GSAM, uh, and then quickly found the role at Welcome in 2010. That's kept me busy with a very varied career um, ever since. So happy, happy to answer any questions on investment management, but also in terms of internships, I've been part of our intern program for a while, interviewing uh, prospective interns and graduates, um, managing them, uh, and then kind of streamlining how the process works as well. Fabulous. Thank you so much. And Rebecca, welcome. I saw Hi. you just joined, so jump right in. We'd love to hear about your background and path here. Hi, so apologies first. Um, of course, technical difficulties always come at the most inconvenient times. Um, but I am Rebecca. I did a gain internship in 2021 um, while studying economics at Newcastle University. Um, I did my internship at Border to Coast Pension Partnership, which is based in Leeds. Um, and I was fortunate enough to secure a graduate scheme with them when I finished my final year of university. Um, and I kind of kept working with Gain ever since then. Fantastic. We're very proud of you. And we're really, really <laughs> pleased that you could join this particular panel. It's, it's really, really appropriate. Uh, Sybil, over to you. Thank you, Natasha. So yeah, my name is Sybil Indeba, and I uh, did a gain internship last year uh, in my final year at Edinburgh University. I studied geography, so I don't come from a financial background like I know many on the call aren't today. Um, and then, yeah, after my gain internship at Scary War Asset Management, I interned at Schroeder's Asset Management also. And then I secured a full time offer, a graduate offer for this year in September. Um, so, yeah, after my gap year this year, I'll be starting at Schroeder's Asset Management on a rotational um, graduate program. That is fantastic. We are super proud of you and we'll have you on lots of panels, <laughs> you know, for sharing, sharing this um, path and, and good advice. So actually going back to Devon. Maybe you can walk us through your thinking uh, from the organizational perspective. Why are internships important? You know, why do companies do this and how does it help people think about their careers? Yeah, that's a great question. I think from the company perspective, interns are invaluable. Like the excitement when they join across the firm is very high. People are excited. You all bring such a unique perspective and are earlier in your career, of course, and are really experiencing an early part of your career. So you just have a different perspective that's unique and even um, talking about coming from different backgrounds, like the history background, we want, we want diversity of thought. And so an intern program is the perfect way to bring that in to the firm and really infuse that into the talent pipeline. It also is helpful from the conversion perspective. We love to be able to convert interns to full time. Um, it's a great way to bring people that have experienced about two months at the firm, know it pretty well, and then are ready to start their career here. Um, so it's a great source of talent for the firm. But for you all, I think it's important to remember as you're entering your internships that even if this isn't your dream job, it's just as important to learn what you don't like as much as it is to learn what you do like. So take, take the summer and try and be a sponge, take as much in as you can. As things happen, write them down, things that you did like, things that you don't like. And then as you move forward in your career, it's I've found myself, I'll always look back and at prior roles and think, I really liked this part of this role I didn't like this and it will help you think about other opportunities in the industry that um, you can pursue and will be a good fit for you but on the other hand you may absolutely love your experience over the summer want to re return full time and I think the great part is a lot of firms do have full-time opportunities um, for interns so the, it's really it's a mutually beneficial relationship over the summer. So it, it's really about experimenting and mm -hmm. understanding uh, different types of roles, talking to different types of people. In many firms, the intern actually goes around different teams and spends time with them. 
So it's, it's not, uh, as you said, it's not a commitment forever. Uh, it's sort of a try before you buy uh, that gives you a lot of insight and new relationships with people that can provide you further guidance. And Elian, I'm wondering, so when you think about summer interns, if you're having some this year and if you've encountered in the past, what are sort of things that they maybe don't think about before starting? What are some of the things that you, you would advise them to consider, you know, before showing up on day one? Hmm. Yeah, so obviously understanding, uh, you're not going to know the details of the industry and where the, the company that you're joining, where they sit within that industry, but to try to have some sense of context. So I would be asking kind of a mentor or, or figures um, associated with the industry, like what questions would you want to know about this firm that I'm joining? You know, what do you think are, are some of the, the, the tailwinds behind them? What are some of the headwinds they're facing? Just to get a sense of what some kind of really topical issues for the company you're joining might be. Um, I think obviously, uh, hopefully, you, that because you've got these roles, you, you enjoy reading the financial press, so stay close to the news as, as far as you can. Um, and there's lots of different kind of interesting pieces that give you different perspectives uh, within that. And I think that would be useful. Um, and then I think, I know you've all done um, a training the street program, which is, is great and hopefully gives really good context. Um, but I would come um, with the intention to populate some sort of journal um, or glossary. So uh, what I did and I uh, suggest that our interns do is just have a Word document or whatever you want and just be pasting in uh, key terms that you learn or key snippets or takeaways that you learn um, a little each day or every week. And that will hopefully help improve your understanding and then give you a great reference point to look back to um, when you might be applying for, for jobs or roles later on and when you're asked the critical questions, okay, so what did you actually do? What did you take away from that experience? That's a great idea. That's great advice. I think journaling in general is really helpful when you're going through something new, a new experience or a transition, because there's so much new information uh, and there's so much stuff that you can reflect on later. Uh, that, it, that if you just write a few lines or a few words every day, you don't have to even define them immediately. But whatever it is that on, you know, on, on day one, week one, week two grabs you, those are going to be probably really salient things that stay with you for a while. And so it's a great idea to do that. And I think Sybil is shaking her head. So maybe you can tell us what, what did you do last year? How did you prepare and what do you wish you had done you know, that maybe you didn't know then and you know now? Yeah, I can definitely agree on the point with, um, you know, writing things down, even as, if it's just having a notepad and just jotting things down, because you are going to be like bombarded with a lot of new information. And especially if you're coming from a non-financial background or you're not familiar with the industry, there's going to be acronyms and terms and so much to remember. And you just it's just impossible to remember everything. Um, and on top of that, not just the information you get, but also the people you meet which is very valuable. And a lot of the times they'll say, oh yeah, let's connect on LinkedIn or you know, keep in touch with them. And by the end of the day, you might have just gone through so many things that you like, oh, what was that person's name again? Like it would have been good to connect with them. So yeah, writing people's names down as well is super helpful. Um, and then in terms of like before you join, um, I know for, for me, uh, my firm actually provided a reading list. Um, so they actually asked members of the team, you know, what helpful books had they read uh, throughout their career that they thought would have be, would be, they wish they had uh, when they first started. And I got that uh, passed down to me. So then that was really good. It was just articles, reading um, books, everything. So even just get in touch with your point of contact at the firm because they, they were super keen to give me that resource it wasn't even something I had thought of um, but yeah get in touch with your point of contact and just ask them is there anything that they'd like you to read or you know um, you know just start, start to get your head around um, and yeah they might have a bunch of resources for you already and presumably they would have expected that you read their website right and that you have done the very kind of basic due diligence and uh, have read the materials that they post for um, public communication. 
Yes, of course. That is the very first step, I would say. Even, you know, probably when you're interviewing, you've already read about um, their firm on their website. If they're on LinkedIn, follow them on LinkedIn so you know what they're, uh, can I keep up to date with what they're doing currently? Um, sometimes our website information might be a bit dated. Um, and in terms of like what to look for specifically, I would say um, look for your team's philosophy or the firm's philosophy. That really helped me um, because, you know, there's so many different approaches, um, as Elena mentioned. You know, there's so many different areas in the industry and different um, teams do different things and they fit in very differently in the industry depending on what they do. But the team's or the firm's philosophy will tell you exactly like the core of what they do and how they approach things. Um, so kind of look for that. They usually talk about that in their um, on their website or even on um, um, investor documents. They might mention, you know, what's our approach to investing? Are they value orientated? Are they growth orientated? Which markets are they investing in? Just to get a basic idea. And you might not even understand everything yet, but kind of just have them jot it down and then you'll hear these things being thrown around once you start, which is um, good to know. That's great advice. Thank you, Sibyl. And Rebecca, what was most useful for you in getting ready for day one? Uh, yes, I think I've had some great answers there. And I think I'd probably echo some of those thoughts. Um, I'd definitely say, like it's been mentioned, start with the basics, just kind of understanding what the company does, what's their kind of end client, what are they investing for, um, and keep it quite basic to begin with. Um, I think sometimes as well, as much as it's great to have all this information behind you, um, the main advice I would give is just going with an open mind. You're going to be like a sponge and absorbing all this information. Um, so just ask those questions, be curious. Anything you don't know, ask. Um, and yeah, definitely be open minded. Um, I personally did journal as well while I was on my internship. Um, I kept like a diary of kind of the different tasks I was doing and I'd note down things that like I enjoyed and things that I found challenging so that when it came to kind of like looking at graduate positions um, despite the fact that I ended up there because I liked it so much um, it definitely gave me better clarity when it came to like the graduate market and things. Um, I would also echo the idea of like making sure the people you're speaking with you're connecting with and um, definitely send a follow-up emails to people um yeah and don't be afraid to kind of make connections and use those contacts that you'll make um within your internship that's great did you have to um prepare something formally before you start did you have to do any kind of uh, besides the prep from gain did you have to do anything yeah. for the firm um, I personally didn't. Um, it was kind of like turn up on day one um, and kind of just got stuck into things then. Um, it was very much a kind of learn as I went on. Um, but obviously every company is different, especially I went to quite a small company and large companies might be different as well, uh, depending on their kind of capabilities and HR resources. Um, so I think that's one of the main things to kind of stay open minded and stay um inquisitive as it might be different um across different internships compared depending on what it's firm you go to very true they're all very different I mean it sounds like Sibyl had a long reading list and yeah uh, some very some, some very engaged folks who wanted to make sure that she has some base knowledge before she starts mm -hmm. you had sort of more of a blank page I was really really uh surprised like my son has an internship this summer in New York, he had to do like an entire accounting module and pass a test, you know, before he starts. So uh, it, it is very different depending on where you go, but that doesn't mean that in and of itself that defines your experience, right? So as Devin said, firms use this, organizations use this to just see a larger pool of talent and to get a better idea of, of the diversity of thought out there and the diversity of talents and then see what will fit into the organization in terms of its design, philosophy, purpose, et cetera. So Devin, back to you, how are interns assessed? So, you know, once they arrive, what do you do as a human capital manager to make sure they have a good experience, but also that you get, you know, a return on your investment into the program? Yeah, so in terms of ensuring that you all have a great experience. There's a lot that goes in on the back end. We de we do a lot of surveying. We make sure that managers and stakeholders are prepared to give a fulfilling 
internship experience, that there's a lot of work. Um, we pair everyone with mentors, all of that good stuff. And then the way we kind of assess talent is there's a lot of different kind of not metrics, but there's a lot of different ways that you can impress the firm over the summer. It's not all about like giving the best stock pitch presentation if you're if you're doing um, stock coverage. It's showing proactivity, um, intellectual intellectual curiosity. So what that could look like is reaching out to people across the organization, setting up coffee chats, um, taking initiative and doing work that may not necessarily be directly in your in your scope and um, just going above and beyond. And then I think interest also goes a long way. There have been plenty of times where we get to the end of the summer and people haven't necessarily demonstrated an interest in returning full time. So if you do think that this is a place that you would like to stay, make sure that you're having conversations with the recruiter, with your manager and making sure that they know that you are interested. So that's something that's that's big. Um, so really just like taking it all in, uh, making the most of the experience. And there will be times that you fail, but failing quickly and getting back up and um, not letting it kind of impact the rest of your summer. It's really interesting because essentially what you said is that although hard skills are really important in you getting the internship, it sounds like it's the soft skills that get you the job. Yeah. So in terms of the most important soft skills, you mentioned initiative and interest. Um, how do interns go about expressing that? What are, the, what are the common courtesies and the common protocol in your firm? And we'll go through each of the panelists. Uh, what is considered best practices in terms of courtesy in planning and reaching out for a coffee with someone in trying to make connections? Yeah, so I think in terms of coffee chats and making connections, best practice is to always ask the person ahead of time before sending an invite to make sure that they have time. And if they do, what time of the day might work best for them. And it's just nice to kind of give an initial introduction before putting time on somebody's calendar. Dependent, you can always also, I've had interns reach out to me to ask me to help facilitate that depending on the seniority level. I think depending on the structure and the size of the program as well, um, there those conversations may happen organically. So I do check-ins with the intern at the end of week one, at the midpoint, and then towards the end. So there's plenty of opportunity for the student to tell me that they're interested. I try and assess for that. But if you don't have those formal opportunities, they're what would stand out to me is someone taking the time to put to put themselves in front of me and tell me that interest without me having to ask. So um, there's a couple of different ways you can go about it. That's great. That's very useful. Thank you, Elaine. How does it work at Welcome since you are an asset owner, you are an endowment, so it, it, it is a different vibe. Yeah, so in, in terms of um taking initiative with people or, or tips for tips for the internship what, what tips for the internship in terms of what Devin was saying on the soft skills of demonstrating initiative demonstrating interest building those internal sort of resources yeah. uh to be asked to return yeah absolutely so i i totally echo the point on proactivity i think we expect interns to be asking questions as they go we very much welcome we're a smaller team than say a bank or a large asset manager so people in terms of welcome to kind of email or come up to us or send us a teams chat message if they're not sure uh, particularly when you are working remotely um it's very important many firms still have that hybrid approach it's very important that you don't just drop off the radar so don't be shy to contact someone on teams um, chats um i think um, other soft skills in, in term, and examples of being proactive would be if you're invited to attend a meeting um offer to take notes beforehand uh perhaps do a bit of desktop research on uh, on the manager or the company you're meeting with and potentially send around any interesting articles maybe have a think about what you might want to get out of the meeting uh, as a as a company uh, and some key questions although 
probably that will come from the person you're working with, but you can contribute um, to that. So I think that's always really helpful. Um, I definitely partly judge intent quality based on their, um, their proactivity in sending me notes afterwards and the degree to which it shows they've understood the meeting through the notes. Um, I don't want a verbatim account. I want kind of the three key points that you took from that meeting that you think were interesting and why they might be relevant to us. Obviously, you're not expected to understand every every word, every sentence that that went on in in, in there. Um, but but be prepared to kind of ask questions where you didn't understand, and that's and that's great. That's brilliant. Um, other soft skills, I think, as Devin said, um, you won't get it all right. It's fine to make mistakes. Actually, how you respond to the mistake is something that people are uh, evaluating and interested in. Like, do put your hand up and say, I got that wrong. Uh, that was definitely the case for me in, in the slightly more cutthroat environment of an investment banking internship, um, that they want you to, to see how you respond to that, how you pick yourself up, how you hopefully don't make the same mistake um, again. Uh, and then I'd say kind of enthusiasm really counts for a lot. And that comes back to the point of, wanting to hear people's stories and equally as Devin said do do put time in people's diaries once you've checked that it's okay that they have time to go for coffee with you or whatever and and ask them how they end up where they are and see see what resonates with you and 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 what doesn't from those exchanges that's super helpful really good advice and for what it's worth my my personal experience and opinion is that there's a 20 minute rule don't ask people for time unless you know that you can fill it. And 20 minutes is actually a very manageable amount of time because you can go for a walk, you can get a coffee, you can sit at their desk. So when you're reaching out to say, do you have time to sit down and talk to me? It's better if you don't make it super open-ended. Uh, it's better if your first encounter is 20 minutes uh, and then you can ask the person about their background or their role, go deeply into their responsibilities and show enthusiasm in learning more talk about yourself and voila, 20 minutes is done. And then if there is a follow-up, you know, maybe they'll reach out to you or you reach out to them. But I felt like that worked really well. Um, and I'd love to hear Rebecca and Sybil, how did you figure out what's the internal vibe uh, in the firm when you're an intern? Like, how did you know, who do I go to first? Who never does lunch? Who likes coffees? You know, what, what, what did you do to get the compass? Maybe Rebecca, you go first. Um, so I would say that one of the key things to kind of try and understand about uh, the company when you get into it is kind of the culture. And so with the culture comes kind of everything else, like how do people build relationships? Um, how do people like go about putting some time in people's diaries? Is it such a formal process? Um, I think my advice would be not to sweat it too much in terms of that most people you encounter will be happy to help and um, will be very interested in helping their interns as um, like everyone's mentioned you might be back on the graduate scheme um, so I think assessing that kind of cultural fit and where you fit into that is quite important um, I personally um, went into the office every day on my internship. I found for me that was a really good way to kind of build those human connections first. And so that when I was working remotely, I found it easier to just give someone a Teams message as I spent the time having a chat at the coffee machine or if you've got a hot desk in policy, it's great to get to sat, sit next to other people and then conversations can happen organically. So you can have that 20 minute conversation without saying, oh, um, do you have time to fit me in or anything like that? Obviously, that's so dependent on um, the company structure and culture. And um, one thing I would recommend doing if you are in a smaller company or a company that encourages cross teams working is that whilst you might be placed in one team, um, reach out to other departments or teams that you might be interested in and set up a formal call um, to learn more about what they do. Um, and before you do that, I would definitely suggest writing down some questions so that you can make sure you're maximising um, what you're getting out of that time. And the person who's given the time feels like you've come with an agenda and prepared and it obviously reflects well. Rebecca, did you have a mentor at the firm? Um, I personally didn't have a formal mentor. Um, it's quite a small firm. Um, however, the general culture is that most people took on a mentoring kind of role and responsibility. So the people who were already graduates kind of mentored the internship. Um, and that's probably what will happen with the next set of interns. Us as graduates will definitely um, mentor and kind of take people under our wing. Like I say, it's very important to understand the culture of different companies. 
That's great. No, it is really important. Like mm -hmm. at Capital Group, we had a mentor for each summer analyst. We also had an open door, mm -hmm. you know, so you had sort of two people uh, to ask all of your, you know, quote unquote, silly questions. There are no silly questions, but sometimes you feel like, you know, asking one person is not enough. But it's great when you when you have that sort of a group, as you describe in a small firm where everyone's engaged and hands on to facilitate a summer internship. Sybil, how is it for you cracking the code? Yeah, so for me, I would echo a lot of what Rebecca said, um, but a, a major point for me was actually reaching out to junior people in the firm. I think as interns, we could be pretty keen and we're like, oh, I should, you know, book a coffee with my manager and this person and this person. But um, actually, the recent graduate who just started uh, would have probably really good advice because it would be more um tailored to your perspective because they've probably just done an internship maybe and you could talk to them about how they figured out the work culture um, or how they navigate the office and how to book in coffee chats um, and especially for your quote-unquote silly questions which of course there's no silly questions but you might feel more comfortable going to someone um, a bit more junior um, so like a new grad or someone who's just rolled off the graduate program or something um, so yeah that was pretty key for me um, and yeah again I would say like as Rebecca said um, those informal chats in the office are really good for kind of breaking the ice before you then email to request for time so yeah if you're hot desk and the person next to you just kind of have a conversation with them or you know it, it could be something really small like how was your lunch and then you're like oh by the way like kind of um get get in that way um and yeah spending time in the office was really key for me I would say um so yeah pretty much I would say those are the the main points and also reach out to people in different departments um that's really valuable and actually I think um, when at the end of your internship, um, that's one of the things they'll look at is how much of an effort you you made to go outside of your team as well. So just just because there's a department where you think, oh, I'm not really interested in that area or something, um, you know, still reach out to people and learn about their career if if it's not about the the team or that particular asset class that you want to learn about but just learn about their career how they made their way into the industry those things are really important as well and you might actually learn something about their their asset class that you never knew before and actually gain some interest in it so yeah definitely um, move outside of your team and, and network across the whole farm that's great advice I think the horizontal relationship building is as important if not more than vertical and you're right that a lot of interns and young associates tend to build the upward chain, you know, but you really need your whole uh, peer group and ecosystem to be in sync with who you are to thrive at work. And I'm curious, what kind of a project did you have last summer, Sybil? I'll, Rebecca, I'll ask you the same question because often interns are just really nervous. It's like, what is gonna be my assignment? What am I gonna be asked to do? And what if I don't know how to do it? So can you tell us a bit of what you had to do last summer? Yes, so um, I was assigned a company. So my gain internship was in emerging markets. Um, I was assigned a company in emerging markets. And um, yeah, I basically just had to do a pitch on the company, um, give my opinion on it, do some research, uh, formulate some uh, data, and then give my final opinion on it, whether I would say invest, not invest, or maybe keep it on the waiting list. Um, and that was really valuable. I mean, as I mentioned, I'm not from the industries or, or have any financial background. So just even just knowing what that looks like, I think day to day was really essential because, you know, you hear, of OK, asset management and it seems like this massive, huge thing. But then once you get into the work, you kind of get a feel for what you'll be doing day to day. So, you know, financial looking through financial statements, P&L, um, everything, you kind of get familiar with it. And then it you kind of start, start to demythify it a little bit. It doesn't seem like this big, scary thing anymore. Um, so, yeah, that practical work is super important. And yeah, just throw yourself into your project, whatever it is. And um, as well, for me, I was actually able to keep my work. So they allowed me to, um, you know, take it away. And for future interviews, I could show it as kind of a portfolio of work or here's what I've done and this is my experience. So, yeah, your firm might be comfortable with you doing that, you know, just taking out any sensitive information if you, if you have got that in there but um it's super valuable not just during your internship but after your internship as well you know you can take that on with you and build up a portfolio of work that you've done and to do your research uh how did you go about 
doing that with an emerging market company? What was the company based? Uh, so it was based in India, the company. Um, and I was, so before the task was actually given, um, we got um, kind of, I guess, sessions of how to use different tools. So such as Capital IQ or MSCI, um, uh, we didn't use Bloomberg, but we got to see it, of course, um, on others' uh, desktop and kind of familiarize ourselves of where we can pull different bits of information from. Um, so we had all the sessions for for our um, data collection, but in terms of for my own um, initiative, I would just you know Google get um, the investment relation reports. Those are really handy. You can get those. Um, you know they're open to anyone. So even if you want to do a little bit of extra research outside of um, of work, because I know that you can't always get onto the systems and your accounts for say Capital IQ or or these kind of research platforms. So yeah, just um, the investment reports are super useful. So if you have time, you know, just skim through them and familiarize yourself with the structure, where to find certain bits of information. Um, that's really key as well. Um, yeah. And did you use your game mentor as well in, in thinking through your, your project and uh, and delivering the final product? I actually didn't, unfortunately, because I got we got in touch quite late. Um, so that's one piece of advice I would actually say. So your game mentor, get us in touch as soon as possible, preferably even before you start, um, because, of course, they're super busy as well. And you're going to be busy as well um, with your project and networking and everything. So if you can get in touch with your mentor as soon as possible, there'll be such a strong point for you to help you through those projects as well. Um, so, yeah, if. That would that's one thing I would advise if you can get in touch um, super soon and just establish that relationship and work around each other's schedule, the sooner the better, I think. Rebecca, did you use your game mentor? Um, yes, I did use my game mentor. Um, I definitely do recall asking her um, perhaps some technical things or day to day things that I perhaps didn't understand at the time. Um, but I mainly used my mentor as kind of a navigating tool. Um, so as I was going through my internship, I was asking her questions like, um, this is what I'm doing at the moment. What do you think of this? How can I like get my name up? Over, across the company so people know who I am um, how can I kind of make the most of it as possible and those questions kind of changed as I went through the experience um, but yeah it was it was great having a mentor to kind of have an external sounding board um, where again no such thing as a silly question but you could ask questions that perhaps you didn't want to ask internally at that point while you were trying to navigate everything. And what was your project last summer? Um, so similar to Civil, actually, I was given a US equity to research. Um, that was kind of the main project. And then I would kind of contact different teams because I had like the time to do it in the capacity um, to kind of get involved with some mini projects as well, which may be more macro trend related. Um, and so I did a presentation on those kind of things and also did a presentation and like a stock pitch at the end um, when I, once I kind of done my stock analysis. Um, so I was also in the research kind of section. Excellent. Well, we have about 20 minutes left and there are 35 participants in this webinar. So now would be a great time for questions from the audience. Otherwise, we'll continue discussing the various aspects of succeeding in a summer internship. So you can use the chat, um, you can raise your hand. And in the meantime, we'll continue uh, on this journey. Um, Elaine, maybe we can talk about projects that interns would do at Blockable specifically. You know, again, because you're an asset owner, what kinds of things would an intern be asked to research or present on? Yeah, sure. So there's there's definitely an absorb, absorption piece in terms of being immersed in our daily life and shadowing people. There's then the contribution piece, and I'll come back to a few examples of that where you 
produce your own work uh, and then the kind of training piece of, of formally learning learning on the job uh, my my internship was definitely described as a, a 10 week long interview and I think I think most internships are, are quite similar so we practically attach people to a team where their line manager generally is but then they also get the opportunity to interact with other asset class teams and join their kind of weekly team meeting as well just so you get that different exposure to different asset classes across public and, and private. Um, typically interns are invited to join intern on some external meetings where it's appropriate. Um, they'll probably be given some smaller tasks like producing the weekly market update and maybe even speaking to that in our investment committee, um, potentially doing some stock earnings updates um, if someone's on holiday, uh, but, but don't worry, you will be kind of carefully helped in that, hopefully by someone else. Uh, and then there's an overarching project that that the interns own. Um, we generally make that a thematic piece. So in the past, we've had interns do projects on blockchain, on carbon pricing, on um, energy transition, and our exposure to that, on food delivery. So a whole range of things that, uh, that um, encourage you to do research at many different levels, talking to partners, desktop research, and then you prepare a presentation and deliver it to the wider team, including your thoughts on why that's relevant to us. Um, I might just quickly sneak in um, a soft tip that's relevant to this that I, I should have mentioned before, but I would advise um, be really think about upwards management in terms of there is a sweet spot in the amount of work you take on. You don't want it to be too little, so you're bored, but you definitely don't want to take on too much such, such that you're uh, over-promising and under-delivering and delivering poor quality work to people who don't realize how much you've got on. So that's about, uh, even at the intern level, managing your manager, uh, communicating with them or with the staffer and saying, actually, I've got all these projects on, all these people have asked me to do this. I don't know how to prioritize, please help me. So, so be vocal about that communication because you don't want to fall into the pitfall of being of drowning in work and doing none of it well. Excellent, thank you. We have some questions now from the audience, which is great. And I'm gonna combine two of them into one. Uh, Izzy asks, if you think that coming from a non-financial degree means that you need to do more preparation for an internship or do firms assume you have no prior knowledge. And similarly, another participant asks, how developed are your technical skills expected to be when you start? Um, and how do you build those skills during the internship? So actually, uh, Sybil, I'm gonna pick, pick on you because you did read geography. <laughs> and so I think you're very well equipped to answer um, these two questions with sort of one package. Yes. Um, so yeah, I would say you're certainly not expected to be an expert. And even when you do have prior knowledge, a lot of firms will want to basically start you from scratch and show you how they like to do things. So they will have their own methodologies, um, their own way of doing things. So I would say, of course, you, you should have some um, technical skills and things like train the street or your own personal reading are super helpful. It's more about having enough knowledge so that you can keep up with the, with what you're learning, because of course it's the internship is pretty short. So the, the learning is gonna be pretty fast paced. Um, so more about having that base knowledge so that you can keep up with what you're learning, even when they are teaching you about their own like valuation method, you're familiar with what is a valuation and the basics of valuation. Even if you're not familiar with their certain methodology when it comes to valuation, then you kind of know what they're talking about and um, just kind of have a basic understanding and then you can ask questions on top of that. Um, so yeah, I would say definitely don't stress, just stress yourself and you know try and learn absolutely everything and you wanna be a complete expert because at the end of the day, they want you to learn how the firm does it and learn the firm's own methods of doing things, um, but just have a good base under you so that you can go in and feel at least confident when you hear some of these terms and um, kind of the technical um, Excel, basic Excel um, uh, methods, just to be comfortable when they are teaching you so you, you're not kind of just thrown thrown off uh, when, when certain things come up. I think that's great advice and really important to remember that there's no standard way of investing. Uh, it, it's highly, highly differentiated across the different types of firms and approaches and, and specific funds and their objectives. And think about it, you know, if you go to the restaurant and you actually try to work in their kitchen, essentially that's what you're doing this summer, you're working in the kitchen. Um, a Caesar salad is not a Caesar salad, you know, it, it depends on how you compose it uh, and how you cut the lettuce and when you add dressing. So keep that open mind and the aptitude 
uh, and the desire to learn uh, new recipes. Another question we have is actually about demonstrating your um, demonstrating your enthusiasm. So you you mentioned going to speak to HR driven, but also like what are other ways to show that you really want to have this internship converted uh, into an offer? And if, if you know exactly sort of what part of the firm you want to be in, um, when is an appropriate time to be doing that? And maybe Rebecca, you can talk about it from last summer, sort of when did that become clear to you that you really, you know, you, you want to do this? Um, I think it was clear to me by the end of my internship that I overall enjoyed it. Um, I found the work challenging um, and stimulating. Um, I explicitly stated that I wanted to work there. So I um, spoke to um, the HR team and said that I was interested in coming back and how do I make that happen is essentially what I said um and I was invited back to an assessment center um and then did the assessment centers like a formality um and then secured the graduates graduate role so um I think it'd be important to consider that you may you may have conversion opportunities um where you have to kind of go through the, the traditional route still um or you might have conversion opportunities um where you can kind of just and have an offer um, on the back of your internship um, might be different from, for different companies. Um, but yeah, I just said that I wanted to work there <laughs> explicitly. Great. With a big smile. <laughs> that, <Yes>. that always <laughs> helps. Now, we have a very important question from an anonymous attendee who asks, what type of office attire do you think would be appropriate for an intern? I think this is a really valid concern because especially post-COVID, Whatever is defined as appropriate and office attire is, you know, really, really different things to different people. So, Devin, let me start with you. What is appropriate office attire? And also, like, this is an office environment when you're on the Zoom even, right? So this is all part of that question. Right. Yeah, I think there's a couple of different quotes that resonate with me when I suggest to interns how to think about uh, office attire. I think one, dress for the job that you want. So look around and like people that you look up to and people that are in roles that you may potentially want, try and take note of what they're wearing. I think a lot of firms, from my experience, utilize a dress for your day policy. So if you know that you're going to be meeting with senior leaders, maybe you dress up a little more than usual or if there's going to be client meetings in the office. But generally speaking, I think you can always ask your HR representative I got that question a bunch yesterday and we have a dress code. So I shared that. Um, but I think it's really all about kind of doing your research ahead of time and paying attention to how the culture of the firm is because it can vary from firm to firm. But most, I, I always say, err on the side of a little more than business casual to be safe. Would anyone else like to contribute to this important? discussion it's so funny because within our team which isn't that that's that big it's of 25 people you get a whole range from the venture capital team who kind of come in in jeans and trainers because they're going to be meeting with someone kind of hanging out in, in the valley uh, and then you get the kind of public equities team who might have a more formal meeting with a, a FTSE 100 CEO or, or with a long only manager and they'll be in their suits and maybe even get the tie out. Um, so I, I like I like Devin's quotes and just dress for the day that you you have. Some some workplaces will have quite an allergic reaction potentially, maybe less these days to things like jeans and trainers, um, whereas others will just be much more relaxed. So I think that's something you can ask a buddy or a mentor in the firm um, and just be very upfront, upfront with it. Yeah, I would just right. add, um, bring a formal kind of jacket with you, at least, even if you want to kind of go business, more business casual, just have that blazer jacket with you because you never know what might come up in the day, especially as an intern, opportunities are thrown at you, you know, just on the whim. Like, I remember I got to meet a company CEO just with like a day's notice. I, did, I wasn't, I didn't know about it, um, but of course you're going to take that opportunity. Um, so just make sure you do have the smarter option, if, you know, even if you want to go dress down a little bit, just 
have maybe a jacket with you. So sometimes you even get a locker at the office, even if you just want to keep a smart jacket in there with you, um, just in case anything comes up and you don't want to be caught off guard. Um, but yeah, as Devin said, I would say err more on the side of being overdressed rather than underdressed, maybe especially on your first day, you know, go over and then you can kind of get the vibe of the office. Once you kind of get that, then you can go with what your team generally, how they dress or what, what you're instructed to do. But yeah, maybe overestimate and then adjust. I second that. And I actually second that also in terms of coverage, like overdress in terms of coverage of legs and arms, because offices can be very cold. And uh, uh, I actually noticed during the inside days when I was visiting some of our uh, teams, visiting the different firms, uh, offices that they were freezing, you know, and uh, it, it's something to get used to, first of all. Secondly, in terms of just the whole sort of business environment, you know, covering more legs is good covering less legs maybe is okay depending on where you are but you'll figure that out when you're already in the office and so uh perhaps the litmus test would be think of dressing for lunch with your best friend's grandparents <laughs> you know and uh what would you wear uh for that occasion and that's kind of a safe bet for the first couple of days and then you can adjust course given the temperature of the office and sort of the culture of the office. Now, here's another really good question from an anonymous attendee asking for advice to an introvert, because a lot of what we said is uh, true for extroverts and pretty natural to extroverts. Um, the question is also about the, the airport test, because that's often reference to uh, sort of, you know, passing the test uh, with, within a firm as an intern. So what advice do we have? Who'd like to um, answer this? I can probably speak from, um, I would say I'm extremist. However, within my graduate cohort, um, we have a range of um, different types of people. So I would really not be concerned about your personality type because people are recruiting um for diverse teams and diverse thoughts if we're all the same um it wouldn't work so i would say definitely be true to yourself and don't be worried about it um be an introvert as well it just might mean you approach things differently doesn't mean it's necessarily wrong if you're um more cautious kind of going up to someone and speaking um, straight away about investment, small talk is fine, um, go and ask, like we say, for a coffee or like I think someone mentioned, ask them what they've had for their lunch. Um, there's kind of a, loads of different ways that you can approach situations. Um, and I wouldn't be too concerned about your personality type. I would just kind of go with what you think's best um, and try and just like kind of trust your gut and feeling. That's great. I, I would also say that as an introvert, you have to budget your energy um, very intentionally and thoughtfully because you'll find it exhausting the amount of socializing that happens at internships, you know, with all the events and and um, coffees and things you're invited to and things that you want to do. Um, it's it's depleting for introverts to be that overstimulated. So make sure you get enough sleep. Make sure you get some downtime. Uh, so knowing yourself is really important. I think introverts are really additive to teams because there tend to be a lot of extroverts in this business and uh, introverts give us a different perspective, a different pace. Um, and it, it's very highly valued. Uh, but you just have to make sure that you budget your energy so you don't get drained and, and unhappy. And Devin is shaking her head. Can you give us some more insights then to this? Uh, no, I'm just, I can relate to that. I'm someone that I can be extroverted, but after the fact that I'm drained. So the key to that is budgeting your energy. And to Rebecca's point, everyone is different. We're not looking for everyone to be extroverted. You just may approach the conversation differently and that's perfectly fine. Yeah, I would second on that with budgeting your energy as an extrovert, I actually found that even as an extrovert, there's so much going on um, that you do need to kind of kind of manage your energy really well. And tips for maybe an introvert, um, if you have questions during a meeting and you kind of don't want to interrupt a meeting, you feel a little bit shy, just write it down and maybe ask someone who sits next to you at the desk. Um, and for meeting new people, I would say maybe if you've already met someone and you are acquainted with them and have a good relationship with them, you could ask them to make an introduction, which is a really good way of meeting new people if you're a little bit shy about reaching out um, just straight away kind of off the black. So yeah, I would say 
cultivate the relationships that you do already have and maybe ask for some introductions because a lot of the times I found people were really happy for to introduce me to other people um and yeah even as an extrovert conserve your energy um because I actually lost my voice towards the end of the an, an internship because there was so many coffee chats events after work events and I you know going from a student um at the time you know doing exams and you're not really talking to anyone you're just in your room doing you do, studying and then going to this intense environment where you're constantly socializing and you know there's events um left right and center even as an extrovert I could definitely say do conserve your energy don't don't overdo it yeah no definitely and I think it's important to keep in mind that the prize is not a full-time offer or return because not all firms can even offer that you know so not all the internships that are happening this summer will have that opportunity anyway so it shouldn't be the focal point it's of course desirable if that's part of what the firm will do but it's not necessarily uh forecastable and so you should focus on having a great learning experience uh meeting new people building new relationships and learning something about yourself and if you don't totally focus just on this narrow criteria that i must get a return offer i must get a return offer I think you'll have a better experience and, and the firm will also, you know, feel like a more comfortable place to be. We have only a few minutes left uh, to the hour. Let's see, there's another question. Um, ah, this is also quite uh, nuanced. How do you manage the after work events and how are you expected to behave? I think we should ask Rebecca and Sybil first. <laughs> this is most recent. <laughs> um, I see. I just kind of like am myself. Like um, I know people say bring your host whole self to work, um, and most people don't. However, I'm one of the people that probably do bring their whole self to work. Um, so like I'm just kind of the same as I am in the office. Um, and I, I really wouldn't sweat that either too much. Um, people already know what you're like day to day. So if you're being invited to things after work, they probably expect you to behave in a similar manner. Um, definitely be careful with the after work drinks and things because you have to remember it is, like you say, a 10 week interview um, and impressions do count even after the clock passes five. Um, but I'm sure, yeah, just err on the side of caution, but I'm sure you'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> Sybil? Yeah, um, second that, the 10 week interview, I think Elena mentioned it as well. So I, of course, be yourself, be relaxed, but do keep in mind, you're essentially still not a full-time employee or, you know, a grad yet. So uh, don't do anything too crazy, um, you know, go easy on the drink, after work drinks. Um, but at the same time, as Rebecca said, do be yourself and do open up a little bit. And especially for those introverts, you know, a casual, more relaxed setting might be a little bit more conducive to you having conversations with people. So take advantage of that, um, especially if you're kind of nervous in the more formal settings, take advantage of that, kind of open up a little bit more. And that's when people actually really get to know you just you know, your casual self, but, you know, you've done the interview, you spoke about your hard skills and showing your abilities during the internship. But also, I think a lot of the times um, when teams are decided to, deciding who to hire, they're thinking, can I go to the pub with this person? Or, you know, can I, can I have a, a drink with this person? So definitely show your personality as well. And don't be afraid to speak about your interests outside of work, because that's what builds your kind of personality and character and paints a picture of who you, who you really are. Definitely, that's that's all very, very true. And in the chat, Maya asked what we would suggest um, that uh, the future interns do in a few weeks ahead of the actual start of the internship. And one of those things is to find out more about the people you're gonna be working with. You know, look on their LinkedIn, look at the company's publications, you know, so that you have kind of material to talk about besides, you know, just the weather and you know, uh, some other obvious news headlines. People love talking about themselves. And so especially when you go for a drink with your uh, colleagues or teammates, you know, ask them a question about themselves, something that's relevant and pertinent to their work or what you've learned about them. Uh, and it's a really natural conversation. So that'll be an enjoyable way for you to spend a couple of weeks in addition to learning about the company from my website, their investor communications, reading the FT and et cetera. And Josephine had a question that actually uh, Elaine will speak to about switching. 
Elena, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, I just I can give a quick answer because that somewhat resonated with with seeing people go through that in, in um, investment banking and management. Um, I think you have to tread quite, and this is when if you want to be in another team, but you're placed in a certain team and you'd rather graduate into the other team. I think you have to treat, um, treat that very carefully. There's obviously nothing wrong with that. It's good to know what you, you want. I would say, A, don't go in with too many kind of fixed ideas of exactly why that's the perfect team and you're not in the perfect team because things may definitely change. You may have a false impression. You may actually like the people you're working with better. Um, you may find that, that that other team is actually on the decline. Um, so, so don't go in with a fixed impression. And secondly, remember that if you do, um, if you are trying to get a graduate role in that other team, the first thing they're going to do is ask, well, is this person performing? So you have to, you have to please the team that you're placed in and consider that your kind of near term goal, your means to an end. Absolutely try and have <clears throat> have coffees with people in the other team, uh, as well as, as many different uh, ancillary teams and to build to build a better picture. But I, I would be very careful about making that your top priority. That could be a longer term goal. But but goal number one is is you know do a good job in the role you're given. Great, thank you very much. With that, it's the top of the hour, so we'll close the session. Thank you very much to everyone for attending. Thank you to Laura for organizing this and the whole internship program, and all of the preparation that went into it. Laura has four hands, five pairs of eyes. <laughs> she she requires no sleep. <laughs> it is amazing. No, Laura, it is amazing everything that you've done uh, for this program, for the internships. And we're already, you know, starting to look at next year's cohort. So th this is a, a very, very big job and you do it brilliantly. Okay. So thanks to everyone for joining, to our panelists, uh, to the students. Good luck. Uh, internships are meant to be a learning experience. They're meant to be a discovery of yourself and the firms and the industry. So we hope you have great success and you enjoy it and that you stay in touch with us and your mentors so we can be a part of your success. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thanks, Natasha. Thank you. Have a great evening. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Good luck, everyone.